Hey guys, Joe here at JP Details, and today we're going to be sorting out the rather neglected and dirty engine bay on the Focus RS. Going from its current condition, I would imagine that it has been a few years since the bay has seen any type of cleaning products, which is all going to change in today's video. We do have a few different types of materials and finishes to contend with, including plastic, metal, various painted sections, and also the rubber seals which should make for an interesting and informative complete engine bay detailing guide. To begin with, you will want to make sure that the engine bay is cold, so if the car has just been dropped off, I would leave this stage towards the end. The Focus has been sat inside the unit overnight, so we do have ourselves a nice and cold engine to work on. First stage is to mask off all electrical sockets and plugs. By doing this relatively quick and effortless precautionary measure, it's quite simply going to ensure that there is no risk of damaging the electrics. Luckily for me, there isn't that many exposed electrical sockets on the Focus's engine bay and in all honesty, you more than likely wouldn't cause any damage to the electrics if you didn't complete this stage, as most modern engines are built to withstand a certain amount of water. I like to do it as a precautionary measure and I would recommend that you do it too. My chosen product for the engine bay cleaning process is going to be Valet Pro APC diluted 5 to 1. I filled the wheel bucket with some warm water and added two squirts of Sam's detailing wheel soap to provide some extra cleaning power and lubricity. The wheel bucket will be used to safely house the engine bay cleaning implements and to clean them out every now and then, which are the Swiss Fax wheel brush, a Easy Detail Go brush and a Martin Cox narrow wheel brush. With the electric sockets taped off and the wheel bucket prepared with my cleaning implements, I'll make a start with rinsing down the underside of the bonnet to knock off the loose stuff. I'll then apply a generous amount of APC directly to the underside of the bonnet and jump right in with the Swissfax detail brush. Detailing is all about spending the time addressing each individual area, so even though this is my own pride and joy, customers' vehicles also receive the same amount of care and attention. On the Focus we do have a few additional areas to cater for, being the underside of the real bonnet vents. These are cleaned in a gentle manner as to not pop them out of their housing brackets. Nothing too out of the ordinary with this cleaning stage, it's a simple case of being nice and thorough whilst rinsing the brush out frequently and reapplying the APC as and when needed. When the contact cleaning was complete, the underside of the bonnet was thoroughly pressure rinsed. Due to gravity, we do find ourselves with a few soapy suds on the engine bay itself, which won't stop us from giving the bay a gentle yet thorough pre-rinse. I don't bother turning the pressure on the jet wash down, I simply use the jet wash at a respectable distance. You certainly don't want to force the stream of water into any section of the bay as it could potentially cause some damage. Use your jet wash at a distance and you and your engine bay will be fine. Thank you. 
When the initial pre-rinse has been finished, I'll apply the APC directly to the entire bay and then get stuck in with my first cleaning implement. I'll usually start the cleaning duties in one corner of the bay and then work my way around, concentrating on each particular section as to not miss a spot. I'll hit all accessible areas with this first cleaning tool before changing to the next longer handle brush to reach the further down areas. Again I will go around the base starting in one corner and hit all accessible areas and then work my way around. After the second brush I will then take the next which is the rather slim Martin Cox narrow brush. Surprisingly enough the Martin Cox narrow brush is an incredibly good tool for engine bay detailing, to reach those real tight nooks and crannies deep into the bay, so I would highly recommend this useful purchase. With the entire engine bay given a deep initial clean, the bay is thoroughly rinsed off to remove all those soapy suds. The next step is to dry the bay which can be done with microfiber towels where the heated gravitis blower makes this job nice and easy to thoroughly accomplish. Blow out all areas of the bay for a professional finish and you can then stand back and admire a clean and dry drip free bay. Sure as heck spent the time thoroughly drying the bay after the incredibly thorough deep clean because my OCD would not settle until all water droplets had disappeared. Performance blue upgrade alloy plenum does look the part, but with all of the imperfections in the paintwork, does leave a bit left to the imagination. I was intrigued as to how thick the paint was on this certain area, so I cracked out the paint depth gauge to find out. Readings of around 300 is pretty high, and just to let you know, there is 1000 microns in 1mm. With plenty of paint to play with, I jumped to the Rupes Mini Bigfoot, a microfiber compounding disc and the Rupes Medium Compound and set about giving the plenum a thorough compounding stage. 
Chances are this upgrade component has never been machine polished and after giving a few sections the first few passes I could see the beautiful blue colour coming back to life. For the areas around the sides of the plenum which were far too tricky to get to with the machine polisher, I grabbed a Sonax twin sided polishing applicator and did those areas by hand. One side of the applicator is for polishing and the slightly rougher side is for compounding. I used the Rupes medium compound and the compounding side of the pad to make sure that no matter which way you look at the upgrade plenum, it will be incredibly shiny and defect free. With all areas compounded to meet my own personal desire, all areas were gently buffed. Happy with my level of correction I swapped the compound pad for a finishing one and set about giving the plenum the softest polishing stage I could offer. A white Rupes finishing pad and the Rupes Ultrafine finishing polish is well and truly going to make this area stand out better than any other polishing combination. I once again utilised the Sonax polishing applicator and this time used the black soft side. With the Rupes ultrafine finishing polish and a few moments of my time, the alloy plenum was given a complete polish even for the areas that you can't visibly see. I do have the intention of ceramic coating the plenum to add some swirl mark and water spot resistance and to make sure that it stays easy to clean, and nice and glossy, for years to come. I wipe the plenum down with the G-Technic panel wipe in preparation for the ceramic coating and whilst I'm at it I will also fill in a few chips with my Performance Blue Dr. Colour Chip Touch Up Kit. I do plan on making a review video for the Dr. Colour Chip kit to explain the correct application process, however to keep things simple for the alloy plenum I applied a few blobs to the troublesome areas with 20 minutes in between. You don't want to try and cover these chips in one go with one big blob, you would be better off applying small amounts over the course of an hour or two to build the layers up gradually. The option for wet sanding the areas back is there which will give you a cleaner finish, However, with the engine bay I opted not to wet sand the areas to save a little bit of time. Lithium Trim Serum is making an appearance once again whilst treating the engine bay plastics. 
This product continues to impress me and I do find myself reaching for it very often. Application is simple, make sure all surfaces are clean and the option for giving them an IPA wipe down would be beneficial to do. I'm not too fussed about IPA the engine bay plastics, I'd say it's more important to do with the exterior plastic trim. Apply the serum using a half decent foam or microfiber applicator and massage it onto the plastic surface. This product is a little greasy on first application and I would recommend wearing gloves. The product does take a little bit of time to evenly apply, but I can vouch that the effort and time required is worthwhile. The scuttle panel is going to receive its second coat in two weeks as it was rather faded before its first application. I'm super impressed with how well this product rejuvenates plastic trim and in comparison to many others that I've used, the finish and durability from Trim Serum is more on par with g C4 Permanent Trim Restorer rather than your generic and water-based trim dressings. The finicky areas of the engine bay plastics were dressed with the help of a detail brush, quite simply to allow me to dress all visible areas. It is difficult to keep an even finish whilst using the brush, but there's no need to worry as we will be wiping all areas down with a microfiber towel which will remove the excess residue and produce an even finish. The next product to crack out is Swissfax Seal Feed Fluid which is going to be used on the rubber seals to offer them a decent amount of moisturisation. Apply the product using a detail brush and give it as much time as you can before wiping over the excess. Both of these products, Lithium Trim Serum and Swissfax Seal Feed will benefit from being left alone for as long as possible to dwell and work on the surfaces before wiping off the excess. Over the course of the next three days, I left the products to work their magic on the plastic and rubber surfaces to allow them to become absorbed into the rubber and to become bonded to the plastic. I have tried wiping both of these products off after 20 minutes and the difference from leaving them for three days was night and day. My recommendation is to leave the products for as long as possible because your plastic and trim surfaces will benefit with extended durability. I've opted to use Hydro Silex Recharge which is a spray ceramic sealant for the painted areas of the bay in order to offer a longer lasting protective finish in comparison to using a spray wax or a quick detailer. Either apply the product to a microfiber towel and then work onto the surface or spray directly onto the surface and then work with your microfiber towel. I used a detailing brush to get into the finicky areas to once again make sure, seen or not seen, all areas are cleaned and protected. After three days of leaving the rubber and plastic dressings whilst I attended to the interior, I wiped all plastic and rubber surfaces down with a fresh microfiber towel. The light glisten from the minimal excess products that were still present on the surfaces was soon diminished to a rich satin finish. I honestly can't rate Lithium Trim Serum and Swiss Fax Seal Feed any higher, please wait for the individual review videos for my honest opinions. These products are excellent to have in your arsenal of detailing supplies and will sure as heck impress your customers. I'm going to use g -Technic Crystal Serum Light for the alloy plenum to offer an even deeper gloss finish and to more importantly add some swirl mark resistance and water spotting resistance to make sure that this area is nice and easy to maintain. I did plan on applying two coats of XOV4 afterwards but annoyingly for me I didn't have any in my kit bag 
one single coat of CSL was laid down and the excess coating residue was removed with two microfiber towels. I'm not quite sure how much time went into the detailing process of the engine bay, I would take a stab in the dark and say around 5 hours in total. I've got to say that I am incredibly impressed with my craft and whenever I lift the bonnet to take a look, it always puts a smile on my face. It was rather neglected beforehand and to see it now back to a better than showroom standard makes me glad to see the focus coming together. As always, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for plenty more videos. Feel free to follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Just search JP Details, and I'll hopefully catch you in the next one.